life God shall be glorified men and women shall glorify God for your sake in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the name of the Lord um, happy Palm Sunday everyone Lord bless you in Jesus name and coming Sunday we are going to celebrate his resurrection in a powerful way somebody shout hallelujah amen Lord we thank you for this hour thank you for the triumphant entry of our Lord Jesus Christ on that day to Jerusalem okay in preparation for the final rite Lord of his death and resurrection thank you for the significance Lord of that triumphant preparation Lord I ask oh God that there will be manifestation of the significance in every life every home every institution in the name of Jesus Lord we have come to worship with you Lord we ask that you will uh, order our steps in worship even now we want to listen to you Lord speak to us let your word bring us life let it bring us healing let it correct us let it instruct us unto righteousness that will be thereby prophets Lord in the name of Jesus thank you our father in Jesus name we have prayed please be seated God bless you hallelujah I'm continuing part two of strategic advancement somebody is going to move forward this morning somebody is going to make a gigantic move somebody is moving to her next level and to his next level God is rewriting the story of somebody today if you are that person say I am and I say I am also praise the name of the Lord strategic advancement part 2 in part 1 we define what strategic advancement is and you've got to go listen to that if you missed it and um, strategic advancement takes place in every sphere of life in marriage in education, in career in the work of hands strategic advancement does take place in your finance it takes place there and in part one we did say that strategic advancement doesn't just happen it doesn't just what? happen it is powered by certain key factors and we said it is not accidental that's why it's strategic it's a culmination of well planned actions hallelujah and I know that you want to make that advancement and our key scripture um, when we took part one you remember it's uh, Genesis 26 13 that described the advancement of Isaac he says and the man and I am that man he says and that the color Pobelo waxed great and went forward and grew until he became what? very great praise God that's my story that's my testimony it is your testimony also it shall be our testimony in the name of Jesus it shall be said of you that you was great and that you went forward and that you grew and became very great praise the name of the Lord that's going to happen at the end of this series and for as many as we look into it and we apply themselves to it it's going to be your Lord in Jesus name you are going to move forward you are going to move forward in the mighty name of Jesus so we said it's, um, it's a combination of well taken um, planned actions and that there are key success factors to strategic advancement we began to look at them in part one and in part one we looked at one and the first was what having covenant with what the God of heaven and I tell you the truth very germane you must have a relationship a much more covenant relationship with the God of heaven if you must have a strategic word uh, advancement praise God and um, you've got to uh, go listen to that message if you missed it so today we are going to part 2 we are looking at the second key success factor to uh, strategic word advancement 
it's an advancement in if you advance strategically in marriage you break into marriage you have fruitful marriage you have a joyful marriage if you have strategic advance, advancement in business your business moves forward in leaps and bounds and I told us the graph is like that continuously moving forward never ending if you have it in your business, you have it in your career, it is like that. It goes on and on and on. Praise God. And I, the Lord desires that for us in this period in Jesus' name. So the second factor that is required for a, success, for a strategic advancement is the right place. Is what? The right place. The right place. Our text for this is 20, Genesis 26 verses 1 to 4 the right place. That is the second uh, key factor. You know, we are continuing it. The right place. Genesis 26 from verses 1 to 4. We read. It says, And there was what? A famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto what? Gerah. We are looking at those things that made Isaac to record that strategic advancement. Come back to verse 1 again. We're told there that there was what? Famine. An unpleasant situation. A, a death. Scarcity. No rain. In the days of Abraham, as it, he said, apart from the one that happened in the days of his father, this one was another one. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto where? Unto Gerah. Okay, verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into what? Into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall what? tell thee of. He went to meet the king of where he was going, where he was living, Gera, in Philistines. He wanted to go and beat the king what? Farewell. You know, aka I'm about to Jagba. Praise God. And when God saw that, God came in. God intercepted. We are told the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into where? Into Egypt. Don't jack up. Dwell in a land which what? I shall tell thee of. You know, that was the end of that statement. Then, verse 3. It was another day, not the same day. Because he said, stay where I will tell you. And we need to emphasize that at times because we need to know how God deals. At times he doesn't talk like that. Just straight. He said, don't go. After I said, don't go, he make it quiet there. And you've got to do what? You've got to wait. Until he tells you where to go. He said, but God, if you don't want me to go, where do I go? Where do I go? Tell me, if you don't tell me where to go, then I go. <laughs> and then you'll be on what? On your own. Praise God. He told him, don't go. Don't go there. Go to where I will what? I will tell you. And he stopped there. And Isaac was waiting. Where is he going to tell me to go? Then verse 3. It says, so John, where? In this land. Where you are to go is where? It's this same place. That is no movement. Maybe you had, you had told him, don't go, stay here. Isaac would have protested that day. But Isaac was in suspense for a while. So the day the, after being in suspense for a while, the day the Lord will speak and say, God, tell me, where do you want me to go? In fact, now, wherever you want me to go, I am ready. I say, uh -huh, okay, this is where you will go. This same place. <laughs> Praise God. He says, sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And verse 4. And I will do what? Make thy seed to multiply at the stars of heaven. And we give unto thy seed all these countries. And in the seed, in thy seed shall what? All the nations of the earth be blessed. Where Isaac was about running away from was where his blessings had been kept. And not only his blessing, is what? His generational blessings. That was the place. Oh. And that was the place where Isaac was about doing what? Running away from. Because at that time there was what? Scarcity. Praise God. Somebody said the right place. 
The right place is the second key success factor for you to make that advancement that your destiny has been crying for. To make that advancement in marriage, to make that advancement in career, to make that advancement in your education, to make that advancement in business, in ministry, and in diverse areas. Your destiny has been crying for what? The right place. Amen. Beloved, every place is not right for advancement. Do you hear what I've just said? What did I say? Yes, as far as you are concerned. Every place is not what? It's not right for advancement. I'm talking contextual because you say, but Pastor, last week when you were talking to us, you said you read a book that says what? Every street is paved with what? With gold. True. Every street is what? Paved with gold. But there's the gold that is made for you, that is the gold that is made for another. They are kept in different streets. Amen. So every place is not right for your advancement. Just as every soil is not right for every plant. Are you good in a Greek? You understand what I'm saying? Every soil is not what? Good for every plant. Yes. When I had the opportunity of um, going to Kenya, I saw a seed there and that is um, very good. I don't want to mention the name. And it commands good money internationally. Say, so, wow, when I saw that, how much it commands. So I brought the seed to Nigeria. I planted. I got expert to plant. Some other people planted. It refused to what? Germinate. I got back. Then we forgot that even in Kenya, there, it was it only grew in a particular climatic environment. So there was the right soil and right what? Climate. For it to what? Germinate. Tell your neighbor. Say, every place is not your place. Say, there is a right place for you. Praise the name of the Lord. The creator has designed it that way. So you can't query him. The creator what? Designed it that way. There is a particular environment that is meant for you to thrive. Not all environments. Are you hearing me? For me, for you, there are places that are right for us. There are places that are not right in court. Not that they are evil, but they are not the places that the law has earmarked for your advancement. Just like certain plants will not grow on certain soil until you take them to the right soil, until you take them to the right climatic environment. The same plants that have refused to grow in certain soil, once they get to some environment, even with little moisture, you see they begin to do what? To grow, to germinate. Because that is what? Their right place. Praise the name of the Lord. So no matter what you do, so agriculturists that, have, that know what they are doing, before they make major investment in some plantation, what do they do? They do soil tests. I remember I once banged um, someone who is into that. He was a Briton. He came to Nigeria. He, 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 his, um, his poultry was somewhere out of Lagos. And his office in VI. And I was asking, I spoke to him, where will you go? He said, the climatic condition. They are good for the birds. So he didn't set his poultry here in Lagos. He took it to somewhere in Oyo State. And he would go there. And then they, are, they, they bring the chicken to Lagos. He took time to get the right climatic uh, environment for the birds to be at their optimal level. Praise the name of the Lord. So, beloved, the right place is critical for your what? Strategic advancement. Right place. Right place. The right place is that place that God has ordained for your advancement. The right place is that place that God has ordained for your advancement. The right place is that place that God has ordained for what? Your advancement. Hallelujah. The eagle, the eagle flies and soars high in the air. And once it gets to that 
very high altitude, it begins to glide. Praise God. It doesn't use his wings again. It just goes with the direction of what? Of the wind. And the eagle enjoys itself. Praise God. Bring the same eagle inside water. What will happen? With his wonderful wings, with the weather, with the feathers, let it come and glide inside water. What's going to happen to the eagle? If you don't bring it out of the water quickly, it's going to drown. With the powerful wings, with the, wet, with the feather, it's going to drown. What happened? Different what? Place. The one that was gliding in the high altitude in the sky, when it gets to water, will be struggling not to die. Praise the name of the Lord. So there is a right place. Just as there is a right place for the eagle to soar, there is a right place for you to soar in your career, in your business, in ministry, in the work of hands. There is what? The right place. There is the right place. There is the right place for you to locate your, your business. In those days in commerce, all level. Localization of what? Industry. They say there are many factors. Net source of raw material, capital, and you know, you still remember. Praise God. Labor, material, you know, and then um, if it's, you are doing export to the nearest to port and all that. Praise the name of the Lord. If you have not forgotten O level commerce, clap yourself. Praise the name of the Lord, though. Some people have eaten a bar, an apple with it. They can't remember again. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord, though. Amen. So, that your right place is the place that Jehovah has what ordained for you to thrive. When you are there, you enjoy the backing of God with ease. When the ego is in the air, it enjoys what? The backing of God because God has designed it, designed it, I mean, configured it to be like that. But inside water, they will ask the ego, what are you looking for here? This is not what? Your natural habitat. Amen. So your right place is your what? Your natural habitat. The habitat that where God has made your what? Natural habitat. Praise God. So it is your right place is that place where God's ordained blessing, ordained advancement is made possible for you. That was why immediately um, Isaac was going out. You saw how we read verse 3? He said, stay in this place and I will bless you because I have proposed to give you this land. Amen. He said, sojourn in this land and I will be what? I will be with thee and I will bless thee for unto thee and to thy seed I will give these countries. That's the land. The land. Somebody say the land. The place. That's the right place. When God saw that Isaac, because of what he saw, because of what he was explaining currently, was about doing what? Jack Pine just wants to run to Egypt. Everybody has been going to Egypt. Because he was a honorable man, well respected, he was going to say bye-bye to the king before leaving. And when God saw that, ah, great mistake. Because if you, if you leave the right place, no advancement. All the things that have been coded in the land, buried in the land, hanging on that land for him and for his generation to come, phew, they will be lost. And that has, that's what has happened to very many who have left the right place. Not only have they mortgaged their own advancement, they have mortgaged what? Advancement of generation to come. Praise the name of the Lord. Someone say the right place. I pray that this message will sink into you. Amen. Ordinarily getting the right place, there are a lot of things that will flow into your life. I have enjoyed the benefit of right place as a believer for many years. Just what? Right place. Right place. Praise the name of the Lord. So God had to wait in to stop Isaac from committing a major blunder from um, throwing away his strategic advancement. You know, later we read how he increased in that land. But before it could happen, 
we have to see what happened. He had to be stopped from going to a wrong place. He had to be kept to confined to stay in the right place. The place God has uh, ordained for him to what? To advance. There's a place. There's a place God has ordained for you to advance. There's a place God has ordained for you to connect with your partner for marriage. There's a place God has ordained for you to connect with your business helper, business associate, for the man, for the woman that's going to help you, to link you up with the man that will provide your capital. There's a place. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So there's a place for you. There's a right place for your what? For your advancement. A right place for you to live. A right place for you to what? To live. It's not everywhere you live. There are places you live, you are set back. There are places you live, you are struggling. There are places that you will live, right places, and you begin to make success. Just cut you of what? The place. No other thing. Just that some places set people back. A cost places will make you cost. A cost places will hold you down and turn you from wealth to poverty. We also have places that are like that loaded with blessing. Particularly that we God has ordained for you. One of the reasons that brought about the uh, a great the phenomenal um, advancement of Isaac was what? Right place. Right place. Right place. Amen. So, beloved, the issue of right place is very crucial. Someone say very crucial. Yes, very crucial. Because it is that right place is your allocated place by, by God. The place God has allocated unto you what? From God. And it is where your allocation is that your provision will be attached. Amen. See, that land that is fit for that plant to be planted, that is the land where God has put the nutrients. You take that plant to another land, you will need to look for nutrients and bring there. But in the original land, the nutrients are what? They are there. In your place is your allocation. In, I mean, your, yes, in your place, your divine allocation is where your divine provision is. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Where your divine location is, is where your divine allocation is. is. Amen. Your divine what? Location. is where you have your what? Divine allocation. That plant everything it needs to survive is already embedded what? In that land. Praise the name of the Lord. You bring cashew nut to come and plant in central Lagos. It won't grow. It will not what? It won't grow. Both the sun and the climatic environment will not germinate cashew. You know, before I I, 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 I had like a Greek from when I was small, I had tried planting before I knew all this. Planting something. Some will grow, some will not grow, and I'll be wondering, ah, what's wrong with this one? Praise God. I didn't know that they were not fit for, this, for the land. Amen. It is where God has positioned you. Positioned as your what? Divine location. That your divine allocation will be present. When you are not at your divine location, you will be starved of your divine allocation. Meanwhile, your divine location is where? At your divine location, your right place. It will be there waiting for you. Meanwhile, you are at a wrong place and you'll be begging, ah, there is nothing here, there is nothing here, there is nothing here. There is nothing there for you because that is not your divine location. When the sand, when the plant is at its right soil, everything will flow in. But when you take it to the wrong soil, then you will need to create artificial. And that's what is happening to us. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. When you are in your natural habitat, you will survive. You will need to struggle. Amen. You bring the fish out of the water and you bring the fish to the sand. You said because the fish is gold. <laughs> ah, the fish is gold fish. And it looks like, the color looks like that of the sand. You bring it out of the water on the sand. What's going to happen to the fish? After it struggles for a while, it will die. But the same fish that was struggling for survival on the floor, return it back to the water. And it will do what? It will just glide in and say, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. 
The fish will do what? You say, thank you, Jesus. I'm back to my what? Natural habitat. May the Lord transfer you back to your natural habitat. Yeah. To the place he has ordained for you. Let the Lord bring you back there. Yeah. If you are not there, let him bring you there. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. So, beloved, the right place most time does not look it. The right place most time, they do what? It doesn't look it. The right place does not look it. Just like you look at the normal sand, the normal land that is crude, that is rocky, inside it is where you bring out what? The gold, the silver, the diamond, and all those precious stones. But on the face of it, before they dig down, the place could be so, you know, bushy, unkept, you know, undesirable. So most times, the real place, the right place, they don't look it. They don't tell you that, ah, we are the right places. So no. At times, they even present with problems. Just like it was for Isaac. Gera at that time had what? Famine. And what is logical for every right-thinking man is to go and look for a place where, where there will be what? Soft landing. Just like very many people are doing today. Ah, things are tough in this Nigeria Things are tough in this um, whatever part of the country where you are. And the next thing is that you look around. Okay, they say things are cheap here. Think, let me move there. Praise God. So, but that may not be a right place for you. It's not that it is bad to move, to migrate to other places, but you need to check with the creator. Is that place a right place for you? Or you want to go out of your natural habitat? You want to strangulate yourself like the fish coming out of water to the sand? Because that is exactly what some people have done. And today they are what? They are struggling to live. They don't need to struggle. Just tell them, say, go return to your what? Natural habitat. And you will need to what? You will need to struggle. Amen. Beloved, the same thing is applicable in ministry. There is the right place for you. If you look at the ministry of John the Baptist, John the Baptist practice, his right place was where? The wilderness. You see that in Matthew 3, 1 to 5. We're not reading. Matthew 3, 1 to 5. John the Baptist was ministering where? In the wilderness. And multitude, multitude, they were coming to meet him right there. Even where? In the wilderness. He was even so harsh on them. He said, who want you to come? You uh, brood of vipers. He called them names. It was very hard. They were still coming. Because that was his what? His place. All over, they came there. Because that was his place. And I told you, in your divine location, there will be your what? Divine location. Inside that wilderness, it did not lack He was eating wild honey. Right? You don't find wild honey in the city. You find it where? Wilderness, in the bush. Wild honey, leather. And they say his clothes was what? Leather. Because he will have many animals to kill there and use their skin. Praise God. But for our Lord Jesus Christ, it was not with that, it was city. You go and read Luke chapter 4, right? He began to, to he, he, from verse 14 downwards, they delivered the, uh, he went to synagogue, and as, I mean, as his practice was, in the city. He went into the church, into the temple, and they delivered them the Bible, the scroll to he read began to read Isaiah 61 and said today is this scripture fulfilled in your eyes and he delivered it to them he closed it and gave it and began to preach not in the wilderness and so Jesus Christ wore three piece material you know during the, the way to his uh, crucifixion they had to part his what his garments there was the one on top there was the one the vestry that was under one inside but John the Baptist did not dress that way because he was a man of what wilderness Jesus Christ was not eating wild honey. He enjoyed special provision from all the ministering sisters and brothers. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbors there's a right place for you. And John the Baptist prospered in his ministry, even in the wilderness. And Jesus prospered in his own world, in the city. Right place. Right place. And for you to know that it was not accidental, both of them had been... Pro have been spoken about. In Isaiah 43 to 5, you see the prophecy about uh, John the Baptist there, Isaiah 43 to 5, that there's a voice of he crying in the wilderness. That's John the Baptist. 
In Isaiah 61, 1 to 4, you see that of Jesus Christ there. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings. So, the, the places for them were not accidental. They were divinely what? Allocated. Praise God. Your divine location, the Lord will bring you there. Because that is where your allocation will be tied. Amen. So, it became critical for God to stop Isaac from going to where? Egypt. That was not his divine location. And he was going to starve there. God had not appointed that place for him to prosper. But there is a place that God said, look, this place, not only will you prosper, you are going to do what? Take it over. You will own it. In fact, your generation to come will own everything. Forget about what you are looking at. Forget about the farmer you are seeing right now. This is where I have allocated for you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So, beloved, strategic advancement is made possible in right locations. Right what? Locations. In Genesis 12, before he blessed Abraham, he had to move him out of his father's, of his what? Country. Genesis 12, from verse 1. He moved him out of his what? His country. He said, now, the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of what? Thy country. He took him out of a place to another place. And he said, when you go to verse 3, that he will bless him there. You say, ah, God, why can't you bless him where he was? No, that was not his right place. There is a place God has ordained for him to be blessed. Amen. Amen. The same for uh, Isaac, we have seen. He said, don't go to Egypt. Stay here. The same for Jacob. He had to come to Jacob in Genesis 31. You know, 11 to 13. He told him there, time to what? Return. You can't be blessed remaining in the house of where? Laban. He had to move him out. Today, God is moving out somebody Amen. to your place of blessing Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, strategic advancement is only possible at that right place. And that right place is your strategic place. Amen. Or you call it your strategic location. And such a place cannot be determined by head knowledge. Such a place is uncommon. And that's why we need God. We need what? We need God to discover such a place. We need God to show you and to lead you there. I also must tell us that Satan fights, he, he fights what? The right place. Satan fights right place. Satan fights right place. He knows that once you are in the right place, you are going to make it. You are going to make it. Psalm 1, from verse 1. When it's concluding in verse 3, it says it shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. It leaves also does not wither. And whatsoever that man doeth shall prosper. Because his man is likened to a plant planted by what? Rivers of water. You can't be planted by rivers of water and your leaves will not be evergreen. I told you by experience, just right location has what it brings to your life. A wrong location has made just setback. I was in a location for some years and I experienced negative setback. Just by right location, no other thing, no prayer, no fasting, no spiritual exercise, so I had a shift, a change in my financial situation. Because when I discovered that where I was was wrong, I said, Lord, what do I do? Do I minister? He said, No, you can't minister. You don't have the authority over this place. Move. So I moved. Just by moving to a new place, a lot of things turned around without prayers. The tree planted by rivers of water has no choice but to be what? Evergreen. Evergreen. Praise the name of the Lord. Your right location is where your leaves are what? Evergreen. Your leaves become evergreen in your what? Right location. Amen. So, you can't be there except what? You are there. You can't be what? There except you are there. You can't 
made that progress except you are at the right location. It's not a cost. It is not what? A cost. Until you are there, then you get there. Until what? You are there. Then you get there. When you are at the right location, you will move forward. You will get to that height that you desire. Hey, there is no amount of fasting and prayer that can make an eagle to have strategic advancement inside water. No amount of what? You don't want to say it. Fasting and prayer. Let's hear the truth and hear well. After you have fasted and praying, God wants to direct us. So that we do what we need to do to get the kind of result that we desire from God. No amount of fasting, of, uh, fasting and prayer. Make it 70 days, make it 90 days, make it 120 days. And whatever, whether it's white fast or what? Or color fast. <laughs> Praise God. You bring the eagle and say, eagle, you must advance inside this water. If the eagle is going to die with your fasting. Praise God. So no amount of fasting and prayer. We allow you to move forward when you are in the wrong place. So better tell very many brothers and sisters that are in wrong places to relocate. Amen. They either relocate or they, are, or they do what? Or they perish. Yes. You relocate or what? Or you perish. Amen. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So when people are hurrying to go somewhere, it's good to consider, say, where are they going? Then when you have considered a place, don't just join the bandwagon. Ask the Lord, is it a place for me? If the Lord says no, remember how he spoke to Isaac? God may say, stop. So you need to stop. And then wait on him for the next word, instruction. Praise the name of the Lord. And if God knows that you already made up in your mind that you are just asking for asking's sake, you know what he said? He said he will answer you according to what? The idol of your heart. You have made up. You have even started packing your load. You are now saying, God, should I go? <laughs> After you have finished packing. <laughs> Praise God. So, right place. Right place. Right place. Very important. So, it's better to spend the fasting and prayer knowing the right place than going into the wrong place and be fasting and praying for God to make it right. God does not do such thing. Spend the fasting and prayer on what? Knowing the right place. And once you know it, go there. Praise the name of the Lord. So, beloved, in our proper placement have delayed and handicapped a lot of us. It has held many people down in marriage, in financial prosperity, in advancement in many areas because they are wrongly placed. They are what? Wrongly placed. That's true. I've learned that lesson very many years ago. Very many years ago. God is the one that knows the right place. You, you need God. That's why we tell people for every decision you want to make, carry God along. Let God guide you. Let God guide you in the decision. Follow Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Lean not what? On your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Amen. Carry God along. Because it's not all that glitters that is what? That is gold. And that part, that thing that looks ugly and whatever, inside of it, we may have gold there. Carry God along. When God was going to help me at a certain point in my life, and I needed to relocate, he, he had to relocate me. A lot of, I was going through a lot of problems. And I cried to him to an extent, and he showed me mercy. When he showed me mercy, the first thing he began to do what, with me was to take me out of the wrong place. I was in a particular church. It gave me instruction to get out. So I got out. And when I got out, I was not waiting for the next instruction. At least I had him tell me to get out. Pack your things and leave that place. So I packed and I left. Irrespective of the title or position I was, I was um, occupying or holding, I left. Went to the Jew and dropped everything. So I told my wife, uh, since this is what God said, though. She followed me. So I said, so, next Sunday, we are going here. I did not wait for 
where? So when it was overnight, Saturday was that's on in a vision. It came to me. I had my wife and I was going there. He said, "Don't go there." Are you hearing the, the instruction? The, the first one was get out. I got out. So when I got out, I didn't he, wait for where to go. I had the place I had desired to go. So it was like, okay, since I've gotten out, it's now opportunity to, to go there. So a night before, in the vision, he said, don't go there. Then he said, I will tell you where you will go. So I told my wife, as we woke up in the morning, I said, we are not going there. So I shared my vision. So we sat on that day, did fellowship at home, waiting for the next place. So within the week, he arranged an event. Somebody came and took me to a, a mountain to pray. And I was there. They were holding a program not too far from where I was. The man of God was talking, and to as if it was me he was talking about. And he had not known me. So I was didn't start to draw closer. He didn't start to draw closer. After I tapped somebody, I said, Can anybody join your group? He said, Yes. So I joined. As I finished, the Lord said, Go and meet him. So I went to meet him. I said, I would like to know him. He gave me his card. Lo and behold, by the time I look at the card, his church is in Lagos. I met him in Ocean State. The Lord said, follow him for a while. Can you see the connection? The person I will follow in Lagos, I met outside Lagos. Amen. That is the way God works. Okay? And like I've shared with very many of us, this was a needed um, uh, change in my life for me to move forward. Until that time, a lot of things were upside down. Indebtedness and all that. Okay, he said, follow him for a while. By the time I would look at the address, the place was so far from where I was living. Ah, so far, very far, that you would take five drops of vehicles. Five. You finish last bus stop, this one, you take another one, you take another one, five. And mind you, this was a time when I was uh, financially handicapped. Things were tough, no money. Why will God ask me to go to a church that so far does he not know that I don't have money? Amen. That is the way of God. Of God. Amen. Left for me, I would have gone to somewhere very near since there was what? No money. Does it not make sense? It makes more sense now. Since you are managing the money in your hand, you go to where somewhere that is where? Very close. That is logic. That's why we say we need God. But I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that for the Sundays I had to go, he would always make money available a day before. Someone can come and greet and give some money to our children. In one funny, I will know that that is the money for tomorrow's trip. Praise God. Okay? Come to think of it, I was in a big psychedelic church. And then by the time I arrived at this man's church, ah, it was small and not, you know, big, the kind from where I was coming from. It was half block with um, um, plank and roof. And the man himself, semi-literate. You know? God said, sit down there. <laughs> Praise God. And it was from there, the Lord encountered me, addressed some fundamental things that were happening to me. And when he was done with me, you know, it was from there I was launched into this assignment. Praise God. Somebody say right place. Right place. Right place. If you are still following wrong place, like I always tell people, you ask some people, some say, Where, which church are you attending? You know, some things are not decided by brain. It is God that guides. It's God. You don't choose where to live with eyes. Don't choose we are to worship with eyes. No. Ask God. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. It's not by number. And some people say, okay, we like small, small churches. We don't like big churches. Big churches, there are gossips and all that. Is that why you went there? Some say, don't like small churches. They easily notice them. Well, you know, all manner of things we have had in this assignment. Ah, some say we like, as a church is small though, once it becomes big now, we, we don't feel comfortable. Big, big churches, there are this, there are that. So they don't want the church to grow. 
<laughs> Amen. Then some don't like small churches. They say they will be noticed. So where, which one do you belong to? Amen. Ask your neighbor. Say which one do you belong to? Praise the name of the Lord. So wrong location has held us back from blessings, from advancement, because all that will move you forward has been prepared for you and kept your at your divine word location. But you are not there. They are just wasting away. And you are in another place that is not your own. That there is no allocation for you there. The allocation there is made for somebody else. So they won't release it to you. And you'll be there crying, Oh Lord, oh Lord, where is your face? His face is always there. You are the one at the wrong place. So what do you do? Come back to your right place. Your allocation has been there many years. Crying. Saying, when will my owner come? I'm wasting away here. Praise the name of the Lord. Make up your mind to get your place right. Make up your mind that you will not waste away. Make up your mind that you will not compromise the right place. I won't compromise the right place for anything. Yeah, I won't. All my years, as early as I was told when I gave my life to Christ, I always prayed. Right place to walk. Right place to live. Right place to do things. I pray. I pray. I don't just go to anywhere. And I will tell the Lord, in case I'm not, I, I, I'm missing it. Lord, if it remains one step for me to enter that wrong place, Lord, pull me back. If it's the wrong place, if it remains one step to enter, do what? Pull me back. Don't let it work. Don't let me get in. Because we are that the place that is not mine, I will struggle. But in my right place, my natural habitat, I will just be enjoying there. I will have a lot of allocation. I will enjoy my allocation. I won't be waiting and begging for allocation because they are all there. Amen. So, beloved, call upon God to show you your right place. And if by adventure you have missed it, it's not too late to come back to the right place. So once you call upon him, wait on him to reveal it to you. You say, I've called, I've called, I've called, I've called. He has not shown me. He could have shown you, but because of the idol in your heart, you are not seeing it. And he may be preparing your heart to be able to receive it, like he did for Isaac. He didn't tell him immediately. So wait on him. Be patient. And once he reveals it to you, go there. Don't say, ah, ah, this place. That place that Isaac grew and was great. Don't forget, it was a famine land though. So we are coming to other things that we need to do to have strategic advancement. We'll stop here today. Let God lead you there and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Let's rise to talk to God that we will not compromise the issue of right place. It doesn't matter if you have spent money and you are in the wrong place. When you come back to your right place, that money you have spent, you will make times 10 of it within a jiffy. You will not feel bad that you have lost money. It's better you come back than you remain there and waste away. Begin to thank the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you for what my ears have heard. Thank you for the place you have prepared for me. Thank you, Lord, for my right place. Thank you, Lord, for my right place. It's good to travel if the Lord says that is your right place. And it's good to travel to the right place when you travel. And if this is your wrong right place, it's better you are here. You will feed those who are there. When you are in your right place, you will command wealth. It is in your right place that you will move forward and what's great and become very great, not in the wrong place. Right place. Rebecca was at home when they traveled to come and meet her for wife. Do you understand? Where was Rebecca? At home. At home. She came in the evening to fetch water. Husband came to meet her there. Some people believe that you don't go out. You, you don't mix. Oh, mix. It's because you are not mixing. You are hiding yourself. <laughs> when you are in the right place, God will bring, they will come and look for you in the right place. They have met somebody inside, air, uh, uh, inside, inside the airplane for marriage before. Airplane. Amen. It's because of low knowledge, low knowledge of God that people have belittled God to think that 
it has to be in some confinement before God leads people. Right place. If you are in your right place, just like John the Baptist, the whole Israel, they came to meet him in the wilderness. In the wilderness. Amen. Begin to thank the Lord. Say, Lord, I thank you for my right place. Be merciful to me, O Lord, my Father. Be merciful to me. Lord, be merciful to me. Concerning the issue of right place, be merciful to me. Don't go and set up business shop because everybody is selling there. It may not be your own right place. Praise God. Right place. Bishop Boyodepo used to say that wherever the sugar is, the ant will come looking for it. Have you seen ants in some obscure place before? You say, ah, this ant, how did they get here? So, so far, sugar is there. <laughs> ant will come. Go and hide it at the at the topmost part. They will come there. Say, Lord, show me mercy. Open my spiritual eyes. Open my spiritual ears. Open my spiritual understanding, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Open my spiritual eyes, my spiritual ears, and understanding. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want us to cry to God to forgive us. Most times we have taken decisions of placement without contacting God. Without considering the issue of right place. We just looked at suitability. Nearness to where you are living. Affordability. God does not look at that too. We look at comfort. That was what Isaac was looking for. And he was going to jeopardize generational blessing. Just like some have done today. Their generation have lost because they have departed from their right place. What should have been theirs forever have been mortgaged. Say, Lord, forgive me for decisions I took with respect to placement without contacting you. Placement of business, placement of career, place of residence. Lord, forgive. Forgive, Lord. Place to worship, place to do business, place to school, to study. For decisions I took without contacting you. When God told Isaac, stay here, he said, I will be with you. I will protect you. And when you are in your right place, God is going to defend you. He's going to deliver you. He's going to bless you. Because he's the one that has ordained that place for you. Lord, forgive me for decisions I took. Ah, this place, this place. You didn't ask God. You didn't ask God. You did like Lot. He looked at the place with physical eyes. Ah, this place is green. I will have this old place. But didn't know that the people there were wicked. Lord, have mercy on me. Forgive me for decisions I've taken concerning placement without contacting you. Forgive me where I was not patient to receive direction from you. Where I walked by the leading of my heart. Where I walked by virtue of circumstances. Oh Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, my Father. Forgive me for using my mind and not bringing you in. In Jesus' name we pray. One factor that affects right place is your foundation. Is your what? Yes. Faulty foundation will always push you away from right place. Faulty foundation will attract you to wrong places. Or push you to wrong places. Faulty foundation. That's why you must take care of your foundation. You must take care of it. You must take care of it. It attracts one to wrong places. It pushes one to wrong places. It will pull you out of the right place. Faulty foundation. Amen. Say, oh Lord, my Father, if I am, if I am not in my strategic place, if I am not in my right place, oh Lord, reveal to me and pull me out. I hope you mean it. Oh Lord, reveal to me and pull me out wherever in my life. I am not in my right place. Lord, reveal it to me and pull me out. Let me not waste away. It's better you count your costs, you bite your losses and start making progress 
All that say, ah, I've spent so much money. What about the money that I've spent? I've spent, I've invested a huge amount of money. No, the Lord will restore. The earlier you get out, the better. Lord, help me. If I am not in my right place, reveal to me and pull me out. Pull me out. Pull me out. Pull me out. Pull me out, Lord. Pull me out, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, pull me out. In Jesus' name we pray. Final prayer. Say, oh Lord, in your mercy, reveal to me my right place and help me to get there. If you mean it in your heart, the Lord will do it for you. I have told you, I have witnesses, just by relocation, some things turned around in my life. Just by changing location. Then it was accommodation. Just by changing. I know those who just changed location of business and things began to thrive. Say, oh Lord, my Father, reveal to me my right place and help me to get there. Take me, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and talk to God. Lord, reveal to me my right place. My right place. Right place to live. Right place to do business. Right place to do ministry. Right place to operate from. Right place to live. There is a place you will live. And things will begin to gel. Yes. It may not be, it may not look it. It may not be the hybrid area you want to live, but that's where God wants you to live. Because of the future he sees for you. God had to cry. Ah, Isaac, don't go there. Stay here. Stay here. We bless you. I intend to give you all this land and your seeds. Isaac, stay here. Though it was tough, it was not looking good, but Isaac obeyed. And we read the story of greatness, of advancement. Lord, reveal to me my right place and take me there and take me there and take me there reveal to me and take me there in business my right place don't just take up the job because it fetches money there is a right place for you you may need to drop I'm coming to that this, next week I'm coming I'm coming to the right thing to do that's what we are talking about in part 3 the right thing to do there is the right place there is the right thing to do let me not go into that today in Jesus name we have prayed Father we thank you Lord I recall while we were preparing or while I was preparing that Lord as many of us as have given to our lives to Christ we are seeds of Abraham by faith and if that is so the covenant the Abrahamic covenant extends to us and it was the base of that covenant that you intercepted Isaac and you guided Isaac to the right place. Lord, I bring you to remembrance that as many of us as are saved, as are born again in Christ Jesus, Lord, we are part of that covenant. And we ask, oh God, that based on that covenant, just as you intercepted Isaac and you guided him, oh Lord, for as many as are not in their right places, Father, intercept. Father, intercept. Father, reveal. And Lord, take us out and bring us to our right places in the mighty name of Jesus. That Lord, that which has been spoken of Isaac shall be spoken of us even better in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord our Father. In Jesus' mighty name, it is settled. God bless you. for our hands to bless the man of God.